Welcome to Click Stuff, brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at luckydicecafe.com. And now for your hosts, Daniel Powell, Jason Alvey, Alex Coons, and Tyler Spees. Hey everybody, welcome to Clickstoff today. This is your host Daniel Powell speaking. Just want to let everybody know that Clickstoff is brought to you by Trollandtoad.com, the world's largest HeroClix retailer. Find HeroClix new and old on Trollandtoad.com and use coupon code Clickstoff for 5% off your HeroClix order. Merchant and pre-order items do not apply. If you like what you're listening to here on Clickstoff today, feel free to check out some support for us on patreon.com forward slash clickstuff dollar and above gets entered into our monthly giveaways five dollars and above gets entered into our discord server for hero click strategy and tactics uh joining me today is not jason nor alex um because they did not want to go to the beautiful state of florida so joining me today is azra strife Hey, what's going on? And the newest member of Clicked Off, and my orangey teammate, Nick Ballou. Hey, how are you guys? Good, good. Good. So, um, Nick, I, uh, um, I love that you're in the service industry, um, because go, going going out to eat with you, you always made our waiters and waitresses feel very much appreciative. And while I while I feel like I always take good care of my service staff, and you know I'm always very polite to them, um, you all you showed me that like I need to be saying more nice words to my service staff. Even though I've never sir, said a negative service w- word to my service staff, I felt like I was uh, not nearly being nice enough to my service staff during the trip. That's funny you say that. Uh, no, I think I'm overly nice to an extent sometimes, but that's just kind of how I am with everyone, to be honest. But I mean, food service is, is already hard enough work. Just, yeah. It's a nightmare, as is, but... uh doesn't help. It doesn't hurt, rather, to go a little extra sometimes. Yeah. might be a little much for me, but I still kind of just end up going that route. Right. So um, we've got quite a bit to talk about. Um, we want to talk about our Florida trip. Obviously, the Champion Clicks Open. That was our big thing to talk about today. Um, but um, we also want to talk a little tiny bit about Silver. Um, and we, I know y'all want to talk about Kong a little bit. So let's start out with Silver and the Rock Cup Hero Clicks for Huntingtons. Um, how do the points work, guys? Do we know? Is it like whose line is it anyway where the points are made up? Like everything's made up and no the points idea. don't matter? We have no idea. I w- but points do matter. We do know that at least. I, I will I will say this. Um, and, you know, I, if the next time I talk to Howard... I'll be telling him this. Um, Newmark, David Newmark, is just blowing event coordination out of the water in the most spectacular way that I have seen in a decade of playing Hero Clicks. Yeah. He's making everyone else look like they're just kind of running in slow motion. Right. And I love what david's doing and it's like when i see the rock announcement from yesterday you know i'm i'm very excited to go to rock cup i'm very excited to be there but it's like howard come on why are there these tbas and we so we're recording on the 31st at about nine o'clock in the evening the announcement came out yesterday at 9 35 and we have a schedule, but we really have no idea when we need to be there. Now, what pains me about this scheduling is that the Tracy Brock Memorial event is on Wednesday. And I would really much, very much love to be able to play in that event. 
Um, mm. But if I have enough rock points to qualify for Sunday, I don't need to be there until Friday. Right, because that's another that's another day off yeah. work. I mean, I you know, I guess theoretically, you know, if we get an Airbnb or a nice hotel, I I could work on Thursday from Huntsville. Um, that would be fine. I probably could as well. Um, so I mean, that's not a big deal, but you know, it's another day away from home and stuff, and so I really wish they would have just announced with the post or within 24 hours, how points would work. Because like Lucas said, Lucas and I have been accumulating points since 2019. Uh, LTVH is like 60 points ahead of me, but Lucas and I have over 800 points. I don't think they deducted our points for Worlds 2022, where we got first round buys. Um, I don't think they did it either. (laughs) But even so, you take 300 off of that, and then it's down to like 500. And then even if they reset them to 300 after 2022's Worlds, which I think they mentioned, um, or if reset them to 300, like, well, I haven't used any points since 2022 Worlds because Rock Cup last year didn't require any points. Worlds didn't require any points. Um, so, like, I should have 300. Does that qualify me for Sunday's event at Rock Cup? And, like, I don't know, like, I'm just, I'm not trying to we, say anything, just, I'm, I'm not trying to say anything negative or anything, but just like, come on, just tell us. Yeah, it's tough only getting half the information and half the story, like, when we're trying to plan these events out. Right, because we need to plan I mean, when we need to get down there, right? If it's only one day off, right, I might be able to convince, like, a couple of more folks locally to come with us, right, versus if they have to take off. You know, Thursday, Friday versus, or in part of Wednesday, um, you know, I might be able to convince a few more folks to ride down with me if we can leave Thursday after work if their points qualify them for things. Yeah, agreed. But if they don't, I mean, everyone, most people are traveling in, I feel like. So, right. I mean, where does that leave you potentially flying in Tuesday night if you want to play the entire week? Uh yeah, I mean depending the for depending you know, on a clicks week. It is depending on flights on Wednesday, right? I mean Huntsville is, you know, obviously we can we can drive. I mean, well, Nick, you and I can drive. I mean, I'll pass by your house on the way down. Um, as you're going to drive, I think my girlfriend are going to drive down. Yeah, but it's like an eight hour drive That's for good. you. Um, like ten. Yeah, even yeah, it's a good chunk. Even ten, even more. So, like. You know, Huntsville's not the easiest airport to fly into. Um, so, like, it does require some forethought and planning. And, like, here's the thing. And I was talking to the guys about this, etc. Is that David's blowing folks out of the water. I bought my flights. So, the, it was, we bought them the end of August. For an event that was the end of January. So that was August to September. September to November. November to December. December to January. That's four months in advance. Yep. And I knew when I needed to be down there. What events were going to be on which days. And now we're three months out from Rock Cup. Today's the 31st of January. We know when it is, but we don't know what days you have to be there. And I understand that have to be there is a nebulous term, but for a lot of folks that have qualified and built up rock points, you don't have to be there on Thursday, right? Like, and and that makes a big deal for vacations and time away from family and stuff. It, It is really significant. Um, yeah, and if like, you, like like I went to Florida, to Florida, like you, we all all three of us here went to Florida with our families. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I just I feel like if you want to put on an event like this, like Howard does, and with the you know the the tie-ins with with Scott and with Heroclix for Huntington's, you want this to you want 
as many people as you can to go. And in order to do that, you have to give them all of the information with enough notice. And and the fact that, you know, they released the schedule, that's a good start. But now there's more information that we just don't know that needs to get squared away, preferably quickly. Yeah. I agree. I think creating questions instead of answering them is a rough way to go about it. Right. Yeah. So, I mean... At least for, like, forethought. Yeah. I mean, at any rate, I mean, all three of us are going to be at Rock Cup. You know, we're going to be there. We're going to be... It's just... Do we need to be there Wednesday, or can I be there Thursday night? It's a it's a one big day, and just give us the info, right? I mean, like, people that work in Heroclix events have got to know this by now, right? Just watch any preview video. Heroclix players are the most, like, information-hungry, ravaging people that you can deal yeah. with, right? Us included, right? Like... Yeah, I mean, like you you talk about a set releasing and people are literally foaming at the mouth. Oh, let me get my hands on that new common She Hulk. I gotta have it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Under, understand your audience, right? Like it's yeah. no different, right? We wanna we love that these events are happening, but come on, like give us some info. Yeah. Especially when it's coming to how you how you obtain entry into these events and into some of these tournaments because right. like if it was just it like if if Sunday was just you know show up pay $30, $40, $50, $80, whatever and you just play on Sunday that's you fine tell me details, whatever that's fine i'd rather just pay 50 bucks 30 bucks yeah. 25 bucks whatever it is to just play on Sunday. Because we know that Friday, the 3v3 is, you know, you're going to pay to enter. You don't have to qualify for that. The same thing with the sealed Scott Porter versus the world. We we get that. Um, yeah. I mean, Sunday's why we, you know, we, we're there for all these other things, obviously, because they're fun. Um, but, like, the main event, the star of the show is the Sunday Silver Age World Championship. Yeah. So... Got to know what your main event, how to get into your main event. Very much, very specifically, how to get into the main event. So, Because then it comes down to, I, I saw comments that brought up a legitimate question. I saw people saying, is, is the announcement going to be rock points get reset and everybody starts at zero? Now that completely throws a change into when you have to get there. Right. Yeah. So... But we did know, we do know that they're not, um, we're not, they're not transferable still. Yes, we do know they are non-transferable. Right. Um, so, I don't know, we'll figure it out. I just, come on. At any rate, that leads into our first question of the night. Um, coming from Luminati. Uh, when, if ever, is Whiskey's going to bring back WKO's <coughs> regular competitive play? Um, as a reminder, we love New Mark's event. We love that Adepticon is happening at the end of March. Um, but WizKids, please bring back regular WKOs and competitive play and a 300 modern season with a buildup for Nationals and Worlds. Yep. Um, so... And that's probably going to be our answer for until Whiskins actually. Until they happen. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, <laughs> Lou. So, um, um, let me see. I know we had a few questions here. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the two things um, I wanted to uh, talk about uh, from Florida before we talk about our modern age teams um there's a couple of questions um the most i expect a good answer from you here nick uh alec mooser asks what is the most exotic or weird food you have eaten but would recommend oof that's that's a tough one so um 
I guess describe exotic like uh, foreign to us or I guess weird? I guess but like I mean like gator like gator's pretty common in like uh, we have a pretty big uh, a pretty popular uh, Cajun food restaurant uh, local to us or local to myself um, yeah like, no I mean I was so, in Miami we had a lot of like down home comfort spots and served you know gator and whatnot but yeah but that's just pretty gator's not that exotic it's not very weird no it's not. It's not at all. I don't think. Uh, I used to not like sushi. Um, I used to. Be, I mean, that's fair. I used to be weirded out by it, but uh, I started going to a lot of business centers and stuff as I worked my way into management, and I got kind of pressured into eating it, like peer pressured into eating it, and I was like, "Huh, this is actually you pretty." You enjoy it? Yeah, I'm actually pretty good. Um, yeah, it's it's, it, it's either I, that I it's e- it's either that or Stockholm syndrome. Of uh, <laughs> uh, it makes me like sushi. One of the two. I mean, same thing, really. It doesn't matter. You like what you like, right? Um, I don't know. Weird. Uh, something abroad, probably. Like I've had, I don't know, all sorts of bugs and whatnot. Uh, like in Thailand and things like that. But um, I like, did have scorpion. It didn't taste like much. It was more of a texture thing. But yeah. Was it fried? Uh, was, it, was it fried? I, I'm assuming so. I'm assuming they were fried, but like they get left out and they kind of just like dehydrate and get like really crispy. Yeah, durian's the uh, stuff that smells really bad, right? It does. It it is horrible. Uh, it's like ammonia mixed with like rotting vegetables. Right. Was the way I could describe it. Um, but it actually tastes really good. It was like. I don't know, custard meets, like, almonds, maybe, if I remember right. Um, it, it it really was good, but the smell, like, it's in your nostrils. It permeates for hours and hours. That was probably the most unpleasant thing I had to experience, like, smell-wise. Nothing yeah. bad, though. I yeah. Mean, agriculture, okay. they've done these things for hundreds, if not thousands of years, so they right. kind of have it figured out by this point. So for those that aren't aware, Nick's like a, 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 I don't know what's your official title, but you're like some chef extraordinaire, uh, materials. Mediocre at best, but f- f- I'll f- take it. Food logistics guy, right? Um, I'm a glorified accountant at this point. But, right. But yeah, I appreciate that. So, because um, I was going to say like probably the weirdest thing I've eaten would be in, would have been like gator or... I can't remember if I've ever had snail before, um, but like I wouldn't be too afraid to eat that. I mean, because it's probably fried in butter, and it's probably just yeah. Fried. I mean, butter, garlic, and herbs. But yeah, um, I've had porcupine actually, which is nothing to write home about. But it is kind of kind of decent actually. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not an adventurous eater, so the most like exotic thing I've eaten, I've had moose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so like anything in almost anything in North America is not that weird. Um, not really, because like he... you know, deer and um, all of that stuff. Once you barbecue it, it's um, it's not that weird. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's not it, really it's not. similar to beef. Um, no. I would I would say the. Um, the weirdest regional thing... Okay, so here's one that's regional enough that people may not be aware of it on the podcast. Is um, here locally, we have mutton. And mutton is meat from a sheep that is an, at least two years old. Um, obviously, a lamb is a young sheep. Um, and that is where you get you know lamb chops from and whatnot. Uh, but mutton is from old sheep, so we're pretty. Mutton's nut- a very common, uh, common thing in like England, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, predominantly. But I think that's. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm assuming mutton is tied into like the Indian English relationship. Yeah, but once you barbecue it, like it tastes like yeah, fantastic. It, it tastes like barbecue, so. Um. But at any rate, um, that was one, and then we did 
get a question from uh, Jacob Springer about Moriarty because um, they did unbox the uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, thing, so I wanted to cover Moriarty for just a second for Jacob. Um, doesn't, doesn't he have a like a misprint on his? Um, I'm looking here, yeah. so. Leadership, when Moriarty uses it and succeeds after resolutions, he may generate a henchman bystander within range. That's neat. Uh, power, choose an adjacent opposing character with one or more action tokens and deal them one unavoidable damage. If that character isn't KO'd, heal them one click. He just has power justice lords. It's funny. Uh, outwit, perplex, protected outwit. Uh, Moriarty Henchman. Ugh, plasticity. Precision Strike. Close Combat Expert. So 11 for 2. Yep. Uh, the, the typo that everyone thinks is missing is these henchmen have the Underworld TA, but have no keywords. So they can't... They can't, they can't carry anybody. <laughs> oh, got it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I do want to point out this, uh, this accident's happened in... Uh, to those in his way, that is not within range of line of fire. That is a global effect. Mm. That's fun. Potentially, I feel like. Is this fella unique? I don't think so. Uh huh. Do we have a way to give action tokens across the map? Probably not. Probably not. Um, oh, he's cool. I, I don't really think he does enough. I mean, I do like that he has stealth. For... Stealth is neat. Yeah, stealth TK, mastermind. But for 45 points, this day and age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I think Irene Adler is very good. But... I think so as well. Jacob didn't ask like, I'm about... excited to buy this, but... Yeah, he, I, he I am J Jack and J J uh, Jacob didn't ask about Irene. He asked about Moriarty. Uh, less good yeah. than Irene. Less. I, I, I'm not <laughs> enthused. I wish I you like, were better. I like those pogs actually get keywords. Those pogs yeah. get keywords. There might be something. I mean, they'll probably come out with something for all of that soon. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Was that it before we talk about our event? Um, so let's go through our weekend. And I know there's a lot that we want to talk about. But um, Nick, you played in the Chess Clock event. And Paul Cote wants to know, he wants to hear about the Chess Clock event and how viable or messy it seemed. So talk to us about what you played in the Chess Clock event and what your experience was like playing with chess clocks. So I think it was quite fun. Um, my first game, we both finished, we being me and my opponent, uh, with like, I think we had about 21, 21 and a half minutes remaining. So we both burned through, uh, not even 10 minutes of our time, but we were going pretty quick, like very speed chess, like uh, for fun and amusement, but... I think, I don't know, talking with PJ after the fact was, he kind of explained where he wanted his point to get across, and I guess I understood more after I played my third game, which happened to be against an Apocalypse for 295 plus the 5 for Sword Bear. Um, when we finished that game, I had zero time left, and my opponent had like 8 minutes and 45 seconds to go, which... As far as I understood, going into that game, which he explained after, and you know, it was accurate. But when you hit no time, the whole theme of that is your opponent gets unadulterated time. So all you're doing is helping tarot and passing. Yeah. And we end up going through that, which was kind of brutal for a good ten minutes. Yeah, to um, help explain that for anybody who's listening who who doesn't know, is if you ran out of time, you no longer were allowed to make non. May, or you were no longer allowed to make optional game decisions. Non-mandatory yeah. game decisions. And I would say that PJ also um, included a write-up 
in the Champion Clicks group, Hero Clicks players and collectors, and the Clicks off Facebook group with how each round went went and that sort of thing. Yep. Um, I think the third round of that event proves why chess clocks don't work. I agree completely. So because explain third... explain what happened in the third round and mm-hmm. why so. So um, when was the chess clock hit? In the third round, and um, like you know, what what did the back and forth look like? Because I I read PJ's write up, but I mean I don't have it pulled up right now. So explain yeah. to the listeners the the how and yeah, the what. You want to do it, or you want me to? I can take care of it. Yeah, go for it. Um, so game three, we had ten minutes. Um, me being the person who ran my modern team, because it was kind of a last minute thing, as far as I'm aware. Um, I brought, you know my one team with me, so I played it. Uh, my opponent had the APOC at 300 points. So I knew I had to go quickly. So essentially, I was going as fast as I could. You know, you have free actions, you have placements. Um, and even with doing things as fast as I humanly, you know, slash possibly could, uh, my opponent would, you know, roll out, heal, destroy objects, slash equipments. Um, and just, I mean, time boils down. You have... Even if you're taking 30 second turns within, you know, several minutes, you're essentially out of time. So my opponent would just move around, do his one attack, one roll, hit something and pass. So his, you know, six, seven rounds boiled down to less than a minute. Yeah, so to answer your question, Dan, um, the clocks got hit the moment an attack was declared and the clocks were paused during the attack sequence of the game. They were immediately resumed when the attack resolved. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, you can go ahead and continue. I just wanted to gotcha. clarify. No, no. So, yeah, no, I mean, it boils down to just nowhere near enough time. So what I do like from explaining that is that the OMA player actually... It actually benefits the OMA by forcing them to move quickly, which is yeah, not which it, which is not a thing that the OMA player has typically been attributed with, right? We've had a lot of I don't know complaints about the OMA player like where are you going <coughs> to phase two and use your one other free action. Yeah. Right, like, what two powers are you picking? Are you attacking, or moving, or staying still? And you know, there's been games out there where the OMA player has um, just burned down minutes on the clock. Um, but it sounds like you burned all your time trying to attack it in an even game. So what that tells me is that typically an OMA team. The opponent needs more than their allotted half to, half half of a game clock. Yep, and that was something that PJ had mentioned. The two scenarios that PJ had mentioned were the OMAs, where they took they had 16 minutes left on their clock in one of the earlier rounds, where they had more time, um, because the bigger the team, the more time your team is going to take. Um, the second scenario was this game was actually streamed, um, they had 10-minute chess clocks. They played a 45-minute game, showing that the attack sequence is actually what takes the majority part of the game. Um, So all of these complaints about slow playing and the games and decisions being taken forever and and game decisions being, I want to get more than three turns, attacks take a long time. Yeah. That I do agree with. And and the more attacks you make, the more time you take. And I do feel like with... I mean, you know, again, like you said, more attacks, but, you know, this modern game you play is quite a bit of, you know, free action use, things like that. Oh, yeah. And I think the more cohesion you have, the more you're punished in that sense. As opposed to, like, an OMA, where it's like, okay, there, there's no cohesion needed. There's just, you know, you're one direct line but i feel right. like coming down to that it's just right whether because, your team has 
synergy or not, you're getting absolutely punished for. And I don't maybe not punished. You're using your lot of time, but right. No, that's that what I. Away so no, much you're right. Game, it's like, right. No, I was I was lambasted a few years ago for saying OMA players should allow their opponent to attack them as much as possible and make quick decisions. Yeah, so, but I mean, it's never, that's never going to happen. Like realistically, it defeats the purpose of an OMA. Right. So to an extent, yeah. In my so opinion. I don't know really if PJ's point was proven or disproven with some of that stuff when it comes to the OMA because you definitely are punished in that sense with a chess clock for having a complex team by and far yeah. right and complex teams are usually interesting because you get to explore and use a lot of the game mechanics that are published to us um because OMAs on OMAs are really boring. Um, I, th- I think something that PJ proved, though, in the current modern environment isn't even something he was trying to prove. And it's that the current environment of hero clicks, individual characters do too much. Mm-hmm. So, it's, so. A, it's a design problem, not a game problem. I, I think that is one one side of the coin, yeah. So do we need longer rounds? Is that really the uh is that really what we found out is that we need longer rounds? Honestly, no, I think we need smaller build totals. Uh same thing, right? Based on based on this, right, is the current if the current three hundred point team um they both accomplish the same thing, I guess. Is what I'm trying to say as is it's sure, a it's sure. a it's a real it's, it's, like... it's a it's a data it's a data driven relationship, right? Point total yeah. means is equal to amount of game time <laughs> needed. Is a point total is a relative to the amount of time needed to play a game, and smaller team, smaller build total, or smaller amount of time. Um, yeah, I can see that. Because I definitely think that like some some of the games that I played this weekend could have went out to like an hour and ten minutes to really yeah. to really get a good um uh, what I want to say a good finale to the game because I had a couple of squeakers right where it's like. I literally won one of our apples and oranges game on last action. <laughs> um, and if that was a four hundred point game, right? So if like if if that was an hour game, right? I probably would have won that game definitively. But like I squeaked it based on it being the current amount of time. And that's and that's honestly that we'll talk about what we talked about in the first part of our episode. That it terrifies me. To play 400 points silver in 45 minutes. Yep. yep. To I 55 agree. minutes. Um, I know there's no way for them to guarantee that all of the rounds will be closer to 55 minutes than 45 minutes. But I would like to see an hour to an hour and 10 minutes for games. And 400 silver. Yeah, then and, if you start doing that, then it just becomes... Uh, it's an organizing nightmare of events just taking forever well yeah no i agree um which you know maybe we're we're looking at just like the state of the of the game but yeah Yeah. i mean but is it it's a data it's a data driven opinion based on what pj found out this weekend with chess clocks um so that that to me proves that the game the point value of the current game of the current meta versus the time of a round is disproportionate right now. It needs to change one way or the other. Yeah. I mean, it makes it a terror as, but we can also try to not cram the like Silver Age World Championship onto a Sunday. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Have two day events. It's okay. Yeah, have two day events. It's fine. Like, whenever Howard said that Rock Cup was going to start on Wednesday, I was like, great. That means sealed on Thursday. What I thought the Rock Cup schedule was going to be was sealed on Thursday, teams on Friday, singles on Saturday, and singles top cut on Sunday. Because yeah. right now, you have to remember, like, going to Rock Cup, your Sunday, you're getting back really late or having to take off Monday, too. Yep. So, Which is a lot. For some people, yeah. that means Rock Cup could be a Tuesday to Wednesday event to fly into if they want to do everything. Yeah, it could be a champion click style travel for Rock Cup. Yeah. So, but to, um, on film, Alabama. Yeah. Just I, not I, anywhere near as cheap to fly into as Orlando. Right. I would imagine. I, um, yeah. I don't know if I, I've brought up other games that I've played in the past as far as like Flesh and Blood, but when I was at Flesh and Blood Nationals last year, so the way they do their big events is you have a day one Swiss, then you have a, you, uh, how you do, you qualify for day two, and then they have a third day for a top cut. So like, that's how I think those big tournaments should be. Yeah. Obviously, that's that's a six hundred person tournament as opposed to like a hundred and fifty person tournament. Yeah. But multiple day events for your big tournaments are fine. Hmm. Yeah. Um. But keep in focus. Let's just keep in mind. Whenever we say we're terrified about four hundred point silver, this is why. Uh huh. We already have modern games where some players can't get past two rounds. Yeah. Because of the attack sequence length and their inability to make decisions. Yeah. So I, I want any anyone listening who's like ever griped about how few like how little bit of time they've gotten in a game. I I spoke it out loud to somebody before it clicked to them of think of how long it takes you to say make this attack target them target this character roll shape chain pick up dice roll dice look at numbers compare numbers to attack total compare attack total to defense total roll roll per senses sign damage then you have a character like carnage surfer who gets to do that all again Think about how much time that actually takes up just performing the mechanics of the game. Yeah, I agree. And I would like to say we don't we don't um, we don't get to complain about Carnage Silver Surfer being expensive anymore. <laughs> you want to know why? Correct. When you, you and I, I'll spoil this part of it already um, because everybody can go buy the Iconics Kong. That's true. Yep. So, in a rare black heart. Um, all right. So, chess clocks. We need more time in rounds, more time in events, more organization in events. Um, yeah. But I think in general, if you're not in facebook.com forward slash click stuff or in the show notes, sorry, it's in our Facebook group. So, click the show notes uh, to join our Facebook group. Um, you know, if you're uh, if you're a Patreon member and you're not in our Facebook group, I'll be glad to copy and paste the whole discussion in there um, and send it to some folks in, in Discord if you'd like. Um, so let's see here. Uh, we got some King Kong questions. Uh, we got some modern team questions. Um, so we had a pretty good time at apples and oranges nick um you played some pulp i played some stuff that didn't die and it only died when orb crit hit me <laughs> yeah unfortunately uh, did we play five rounds or four we played five i believe right yeah and i, I think it i was went five yeah i think i went four and one the whole time um, cause I'd have to, well, I can probably look in the win real quick and see. Um, I went two, two and one actually. 
No, nah, oh, that's right. That's right. You went, best day, you went. You went zero zero on the round that I um, that I tied. Or you you went zero zero on the round that I won. I think. Yep. Uh, I played against the Black Adam with support, so that uh, we definitely jockeyed for quite a while. I wasn't trying to, you know, turn too loose. Right. So um, we played Daniel uh, Daniel Valentine on round on turn on round one. Whew, I forget Daniel what um what he oh he played Arachnid and Ghost Rider. Oh yeah, that was round one. The guy he came up to my team. You know, Bucky's arm on can use your powers, Ghost Rider, and empower, and just came in and slobber knocked Legacy Apoc, and I went, I master oh, my, no. I, I went and I went and I uh, said I masterminded to Mephisto and deal this guy one unavoidable damage instead, and he said <laughs> he said, oh, that's what you're doing, and I said, yes, that's correct, yep. um. <laughs> And then round two, we went against Cole Williams' team. Um, I mean, I know I won that game, so... I, I'm pretty sure you guys were 2-0 at the end of round two. We were, were. We were. Um, golly, I forget what we what he played, though. Um, but I must have just been able to mastermind it off. Because <laughs> we both... Because we won, it was two sixty to two forty. Um, I think, I think you were the tiebreaker in that one for us, Nick. I think I was. I started off. I think we both started off two wins. I believe. Yeah. Um, and I want to say it was my. I think I started. I think game three for me was it. Round three, we played against Emily. No, round three, we played against Ryan and Christine, and I lost to Ryan. Oh, correct. You beat okay. Christine. He's the one that hit you, right? Yeah, Ryan was playing Orb in the modern side of that, and Crit, <laughs> hit, Crit hit me with Orb, and uh, yeah, I love this team personally, but right, me too. Shout out to those guys. Yep, Ryan and Christine were awesome to play against. Uh, round four, we won. Um, I'm trying to. We defeated Scott Johnson. That was the round you went zero zero, and I beat Scott. So, um, yeah, that game was pretty boring. I masterminded off stuff. Um, it was two twenty to fifteen. Um, so fifteen points on my team. Hmm. What was 15 points? Oh, three pogs. That means he killed three APOC pogs. Uh, and then round five, we went against Scott Crampton and Matt Esbrook. We lost. I was only able to score 30 points against Matt. Uh, and as Matt told Scott, he did a good job mitigating the loss. Um, Matt never moved across half map against my team. Um... And I went out and killed, KO'd his Jennifer Kale. So I beat Matt. You lost to Scott. We didn't score enough points, and therefore we didn't make top cut in apples versus oranges. Unfortunately. Um, but how was playing 400 points of pulp? Uh, it was a lot. I mean, most teams were pretty similar. You know, a few small variations, but it was a good time. I mean, it was my first pulp event, to be honest, so... I've only ever done like local casual stuff. Right. Didn't get any pole practice in at Worlds. I opted out of that events. So it was good. It was eye opening, but four hundred pulp is still quite a bit. I think right. I prefer three hundred personally. Yeah. This game isn't designed around four hundred points. No, you can just right. throw anything you want out and it it's six in some way or another. Yep. Um Yeah, people still play defensively, which is insane to me. Uh, let's see. Was there any questions about our apples and oranges builds on here? Um, mm, I don't see any. I know we got one other question that came in while we were been sitting here. Um, <coughs> all comments? No. 
I don't see um no okay nope okay so apples and oranges was fun I mean it's one of those things I do have fun playing in those side events um but those you know specialty theme right it has to be a printed keyword modern and they you know it's 400 points I was just like ugh and I talked about my team um on the last show I played the apocalypse ultron um I know Johnny Dunn wanted to hear about me playing Ultron. Um, the Legacy Ultron, unfortunately, is just not good. <laughs> like, he was fine, but, like, he doesn't bust stealth. He um, doesn't really have any good access to any powers in modern. Um because the uh, Prime Ultron retired. So um, I did see some folks talking about it in Silver where you could play it with the Chase from CAAV. And sure. I, I don't hate that, but like you have to remember, like so much stuff is viable in Silver Age because it's yep. 400 points. Uh huh. And, like, we'll just never be able to just talk about what all is viable. Um, yeah, I mean, just look at the last, like, three teams that I've put my cat. Just shows that things are viable that shouldn't be viable. Right. Points. Right. Like, you're talking about, like, in Silver Age, you can play, you know, Ultron Pym, CAAV Ultron at 100 and legacy that's like 300 points no sorry uh that's 250 330 and then you still have 70 other points to do stuff with and then your ultron gets sidestep side blast invincible perplex um and then uh, mind control potentially uh because that's what the chase ultron gets um so it's just nutty um the whole thing's nutty um but um but yeah so jones drones that i generated i always generated the imperv precision strike mind control drone because that gives his <coughs> energy explosion um precision strike and then it did give him imperv on the rollouts uh, but in five games, Ultron only took damage in one game, uh, which was the game that I masterminded damage to him. To keep something else from dying. So, um, that was also my experience in the broadcast event, um, that Ultron did not ever take any damage in the game that I played him. So... But the problem is Ultron doesn't do enough to score you any points. So, Johnny, that's my uh, rundown of Legacy um, Legacy Ultron for you. Um, do we want to talk a little bit about our sealed adventure first? Sure. I know Sam wanted to join, um... But, uh, Nick, you played with the Canadians, and you pulled the brick that we wanted to pick, that we wanted to pull. I did. I mean, I wanted it as well, but <laughs> same. one and the same. Apparently, Nick wanted it more than we did. Yeah, because he ended up with it. So, uh, the brick that we wanted was uh, Spirit Rider, uh, Cathan, Prime, uh, Brother Voodoo, with a black heart. Um... Did y'all have the cycles, Nick, in there too? Um, we had two hell cycles, I believe. Right. Yeah. Nice. I'm pretty sure. Did you have Lilith super rare? We did not. We had. What did we have? We had um. Uh, Phantom Rider. Okay. I believe. That was probably the difference, right? Cathan, Phantom Rider. And Brother Voodoo. Yeah, I think I yeah, think we Voodoo got Prime. I think we got Cathan, Lilith, 
Prime yes. Brother Voodoo and Spirit Rider in our WizKids brick. And that would have been yeah. the perfect okay. that would have been the absolute perfect brick to get. Um I think we we pulled a good brick. I yeah. I had fun with it. So there was thirty teams Sunday is Sunday? Twenty five, I think. I thought there was thirty. Yeah. Let me look real quick. I'm looking in the the three V three uh, event history. Oh man, they don't have it. Um, view results. Um, Rawhead Kid was our other super. Uh, round one, there was 12. So uh, 20, 25. You're right. There was a buy. Yeah. So there was 25. Um, so out of 20, out of, out of 25, as there was like three teams that didn't pull a black heart. Guess, Sad day. guess which three of those uh, people we were. Yep. Sure was us. Sure was. Sure was. Sure was. Um, so and the, we, funny, the funniest part about that is um, while we're like opening our packs, PJ like makes an announcement like, anybody that didn't pull a black heart, raise your hand. And so we did, and Dan and I are like, are they just going to give us a black heart? <laughs> yeah, we were hoping for the most nope. optimal solution to that, and uh, we did not get that. So We got a dice and token. We did, which I'm appreciative we got something, but... Yes. Um, yeah. So we I am, think we did pretty well for not having a black heart. We went 2-2. Two, two, um, I went... Th- and one of those rounds could have been a win. They could have, yeah. I mean, you couldn't defeat a Cathan. Um, Sam crit missed four times in one of her losses, and I had to kill that silly Ghost Rider twice <laughs> in round four. So, yeah, Dan um, got out Ghost Ridered. I did. The guy had more Ghost Riders than me. I mean, he. <laughs> so we talked about like my team was the super rare. You can use your powers, Ghost Rider. Um, yeah, freak. That was the, the Spirit Rider, um, Robbie Reyes, and two orbs. Yeah, your uh, team was your team was really good. It was really good. Um, but like everything just got picked apart eventually. Um, so to where my super rare Ghost Rider was the only thing living, and in that round four, the guy just had too many ghost riders and like i didn't yeah. hit a single shape change on my ghost rider at all um so eventually it went down now it came down in that game like i was winning but like my ghost rider was on its last click versus his full health ghost rider so like if i miss a shape change i'm done and I missed a shape change, and I was done. <laughs> so, um, that's what happened in my one loss. So, um, that put us at two and two. Nick, how did did y'all go two and two? Or <coughs> we're talking sealed, correct? Sealed, yeah. Yeah, we ended up going two and two. Um, we had a fair bit of points, but again, there's everyone in that. That area had quite a bit of points. Right. And I want to say they ended up going, was it one team that was three and one? Didn't yeah. make cut? Yeah. yeah. One so we were, yeah, so we were, we were out regardless, but. Right. Uh, yeah. It was fun. I got to run Cathan myself. Um, and honestly, I mean, he's strong, but I think, I think out of my entire day, I want to say I hit three shape change. Um. Most of my games went either to time or, you know, 300 points my way. But when you're not hitting shape change with Cathan, there's not much else you can do against, you know, six, seven figures that are right. all putting in work. Um, but going into it again, I would do, I mean, I never played him at 300 points, so it was kind of a new experience. I'm not, you know, competitive on OMAs, but but it was fun. Right. I mean the uh the four points guys won. I mean and one of their teams was a Cathan. I mean Ed played Cathan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't beat it. 
Yeah. And then Isaac played um, the Ghost Riders. So, and with uh, the uh, nice. Rawhide Kid. He had Rawhide Kid, Electra, because I beat Isaac. Um, that was our first loss. I beat Isaac. Sam lost to Scott, and you lost to Ed. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, we gave Sam the most positional, like, hard-to-play team so that we could put, we could try to, like, do our best with the uh, two good teams, and we just had a mismatch on all of our wins. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, my so... My team was really good, too. Because you played uh, Dracula, uh, Prime Brother Voodoo, and Zarathos, right? Yeah, full point Zarathos. And, yeah. I mean, in the game, I went three and one on the day, and Dracula died every game, and then uh, the other two just cleaned it up. Right. Um. So, um, let's see here. So I'm opening up the modern event. Uh, nothing else on our sealed. No other questions. Um, so, um, modern, right? So it, it turns out to be like really long-winded if we just go round <coughs> by round and talk about all of our games. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's... Let's talk about... We can do that. I like to do that, though. So let's talk about what you played, what... Go through each round, and something that was interesting from each of those rounds. Um, so I'll go first. I'll tell you what I played. I played a Cosmic Theme, Double Surfer, Double Porter, MOE, Green Lantern Bats, and um, Hope Summers. And a Crampton Pog. Um, and then as you're talking about your team, also say, we'll answer one of our questions here uh, from Dylan Kassenbaum, um, Mr. Warrior Man. Um, and what would you change on your team after seeing what everybody was playing? There are two things I would change on my team. I would put a five-point equip on Hope instead of playing Porter, or uh, not Porter, but Crampton. And I would not equip my second surfer. I would just leave both surfers unequipped. The black symbiote did nothing for me and cost me in Dylan's game by not being able to attack with that second surfer against a Killmonger. Um, which I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, as, what'd you play? And what would you change on your team now? Yep, so I played uh, the team that I had won the Champion Clicks trial with, um, which was Prime Wonder Woman, uh, Jennifer Kale, Can Use Your Powers Ghost Rider, Pegasus Cap, um, White Shirt Porter, and Carnage. Um, things that I would change now, I realized that while the team may be good, it might not have been a good team for me. So um, I would probably just change most of it. <laughs> okay. Um but probably go back to like a theme, uh, more theme focused and not as positionally re uh, restricted and required. Got it, Nick. What'd you play? What would you change? Uh, so I ran, I guess technically I came up to a racco, um, but I ran CSS, Blackheart, Lilith Prime, uh, Black Lantern, Batman with Bucky's arm. Necron, Genesis with Sword Bear, and then Porter with Sinestro Ring. Um, it was a team I was playing with for a minute. It didn't work out anywhere near as successfully as I hoped. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. I don't think I'd run this team at all again, but I think if I were to change it, I would definitely take out the points I sunk into Genesis and Necron and dealt a little more defense in the team. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very, very aggressive, and when it worked, it worked really well. I mean... Batman being able to cross map for, you know, essentially 10, 11 damage is pretty big with a, you know, success rate of, I guess, three and two. Um, but 
I would probably drop the Necron Genesis. I don't think they offered up enough, and they were just big targets that didn't get to do quite enough for their points. I think Batman is, I don't know, potentially strong, but, but I don't think the uh, modern competitiveness is there either. So, I think but I, Batman is the, the definition of glass cannon right now. Oh, absolutely. He's tyrant with more glass. I do think Lilith is quite fun. That's something I'm going to continue to play, I believe. But beyond that, I would probably begin to scrap what I would scrap. But Right. Um, all right. So um, let's talk about each of our rounds a little bit. Um, and so I would say, let me. I'm just going to read down the results here. And whoever comes up first in the results. So I defeated Ethan Jacobs. Uh, it was 300 to 40. Um, 40 points? That doesn't seem right. What did he KO for 40? Had to just been hope, right? Uh, I guess I must have just left hope out there. So, I mean, this was one of the things. Ethan was playing the monster version of um, Silver Surfer's. Um, uh, and I got to go first. Uh, no, sorry. I got a one map roll. I won initiative. So we got to go to the, um, chemical plant, which is a map that I very much disliked last year. Um, but a map that I decided day of to play on and make that map my, I was going to own that map. Um, so, um, I noticed a lot of teams that I was seeing did not have big map reach so if I was able to go second I had more barrier than they did um, I was able to wait them out and my team had four perplexes and was able to cross uh, four three TKs and four perplexes um, so I was able to cross a big map um, and if you ask yourself why is because I had shield team ability access and a shit ton of wild cards so, yep. um, you can go out eight and perplex surfer four times. So starting to go to eight, that's 10, uh, fly out 10, um, seven plus three. So that's 20. You shoot out three, you can plex up range once that's out to 24. So now you are sticking your surfer out there, but if these teams don't have a lot of barrier that you're facing, right, you can go nom nom something probably, um, so, uh, you know, my alpha included the Seven of Swords, so I splash damaged Ethan's team four times as well. I think I scored like a hundred plus points on my alpha. Um, it's pretty good. Yep. So that's how that game went. Um, now we'll probably go a little different order here, but I know I went first, but I'm looking for y'all's names in bold. Did y'all win your first round or lose your first round? I lost. Okay, I so also I'm... lost my first round. Okay, so I'm looking for y'all in not bold. Um, you... I, I remember who I played in round one. Oh, I got, I got, I got Nick. Nick, Nick, you played Mass, Matt Esbrook. So, I did. Um, I did. What was the highlight from that game that uh, caused your 95 to zero loss? Uh. Well, there wasn't one to start. Um, no, I joke. But I think, uh, to be honest, I don't completely recall what he played. Uh, it was a long weekend. I didn't take notes too well on that day. Um, did he play camo? I think he played camo. I think he did play. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I want to say with that game, positioning kind of jockeyed back and forth for quite a bit. Um, but I ended up getting the alpha off. And I want to say both of his... Every rollout he had missed, but I think my second attack on the camo was just, like, completely woofed. And I went all in, uh, followed with Lilith, had I have missed, or not missed, both. Or, you know, either attack, rather. It would have been a... essentially a one-turn tap on the camo. Uh, but I 
think he was at like a 21. He had him perplexed up, and he had defense pretty high. But I think I was rolling like a like a 15 that turn on like a 21. Hit my first, and then missed my second. I want to say with two probs. So that was pretty unfortunate, needing a six. And that was kind of the uh, the way my weekend went. A lot of five, six, sevens needed for most hits, and I missed majority of my rolls. Right. So it was kind of a all-in, halfway there. Just couldn't pull it out. Gotcha. Yeah, because 95 on your team would have been like, Batman gets KO'd, Necron gets KO'd. Um, I want to say... I believe it was Batman, Bucky's arm, and Lilith. Gotcha. Yeah, that would be 95, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think he, towards the end, he just, uh, somebody hit the, uh, Bucky's arm for the five. That would make sense. And then as your first I round, Diego. yeah, Diego, and you had an 80 to 50 loss, which is pretty close. Yeah, I, um, I lost map, uh, which I'm kind of just gonna do because I'm non-themed, but he was playing a team very similar to what Ryan played in Oranges, or in Apple and Oranges, um, Utilizing uh, Legacy Daredevil with the nifty traffic bear or with the traffic barrel, um, which was something that I had not actually thought of until it was put in front of my face. Um, of Daredevil just carrying around the barrel and shutting off improved movement. Um, we went to Daily Bugle. Um, he was playing, you know, like I said, uh, use your powers, Ghost Rider, Madam Web. Uh, double Daredevil um, MOE and he scored Jen and Jen Porter and something else? Cap, probably? No, 30 it was about 80? 80 points? I don't remember what he would have what else he would have scored. Oh, Carnage. I mean, Carnage, Jen, and Porter um, probably, but close game. Um, that's a, that's a tough thing. Cause he actually had the tech to use Madam Webb who has stealth. And then with Ghost Rider protecting her, you can't pulse waiver. Oh, that's so, yeah. true. That's true. Um, all right, let's move on to round two. Um, I'm going to have to look at my notes. Um, uh, unfortunately, I, guys, I, I'm going to probably be ahead of you guys on these. Um, um, oh, man. Logan Carroll was the one f- person I didn't have in my notes. Um, let, me, let me go to... Um, do, 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 do. Oh, my gosh. As we sat there and took all these notes and... Yeah, Logan was like the one we didn't go look at. Yeah. Uh, do to do do to do do to do. Um, did he play? Um, man, Dial H for Hero Clicks did a really good job of covering this weekend. Um, so. Uh, 300, my goodness, there was a bunch of posts on, um, Saturday. Uh, let's see if I can find Logan Carroll real quick, because was he, he played camo. Logan was my camo matchup. Um, so I beat him 110 to 50. Um, I went out with my alpha on my surfer. And missed. 14 attack. Yeah, we were on Morlock Tunnels. 14 attack, and I just whiffed. He was playing camo with the use your powers, Ghost Rider, and MOE. And I thought I was hosed on that game after I lost that first surfer. Um, but then I would rally back on um, Morlock Tunnels, moved everybody up. The big thing to remember is that um, Batman's uh, Smoke Cloud is a 
a stop sign and a stop sign and a smoke grenade. So I was able to keep his camo at bay using the stop sign and the smoke cloud. So he wasn't able to just do everything he wanted to do. Um, and I was able to... He also had his camo equipped. And I King Killmongered out of um, uh, most of his attacks from camo. Um, but that's how that went. Logan had a good game. It was 110. I think I KO'd like his porters and his MOE. Um, but I did not touch his camo at all. So... Um, as we move further down, um, as do you remember who you played round two? So I think you yeah, should I be. Dalton. I don't remember his last name though. Um, I think he was one of the clicks in it guys. Um, yeah, played... yeah. You beat him 205 to 90. Yeah. So he was playing um, Cap Wolf, Spirit Rider, Double Porter, and something else. I can't remember. But um, it came down to I just was able to get in, kill his, um, basically just have Cap and Ghost Rider go to town. Um, and then I think I lost carnage surfer yeah so i he was oh he was playing um the 19 defend ghost rider no the the super the one that comes back um, oh yeah. yeah with um spider supreme as their pilot and i got so caught up in i know how to deal with that that i just overextended to do it mm. um, so it got my surfer killed um, it was Surfer, Jen, and Carnage that died because I'm pretty sure Carnage crit missed on his retail as he always does. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a. The, we had a little bit of a snafu with that game. It got uh, misreported, and luckily the judge staff was able to fix it. Right. Yeah, luckily they were able to fix it. Um, yeah. And then, Nick, do you remember who you played round two? I do. Uh, I had the first buy of my competitive career. Oh. So... Beat him so bad his opponent didn't even show up. Uh, right. It was it was rough. It's a rough yeah. game. All right. Well, <laughs> it happens, man. It happens. Uh, uh, hopefully never again. But you know, you know, so, like, I think this is a good thing to bring up, and it's very important to remember at, at these events, is that... Um, no matter how good you prepare, how good your team is, how good your dice rolls, there's only one winner of the events. Yep. Ever, yep. ever, ever, ever. There's only one winner. So just keep that in mind, right? Like, you know, you've got to take away from your losses, um, you know, learning, right? You have to build upon the losses and the bad matchups. And the bad, you know, maybe the not so great team building and that sort of thing, right? You've got to have that be a lesson for your next event. Now, keep in mind, that's why we clamor for more events, right? Because you can take a bad event, turn it around quickly to a good event, build on that, build some momentum towards Nationals and Worlds. That's why we ask for more events. Um, yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to take a bad event when it's your only event for four months. That's right. That's exactly right. So that makes it feel a lot worse. Um, but that's why we want more and more events. Um, so round three, I played against Ed uh, AB, and Ed was playing a very interesting Phoenix Sentinel game or Phoenix Phoenix Sentinel team that actually had big map reach with a bunch of shields. And Cosmo had nine range for his shutoff ability. So um, he took us to a big map. Um, now, the question that I got asked here, I wanted to answer, um, was blah, blah, da, 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 who asked that? Is that the how was Bats? Yeah, it was how was Prime Bats with all of your 
Um, yeah, e Eric Adams said, I want to hear about your experience with Prime Batman and all the wild cards on your team. Was it worth it knowing that Batman will probably die at some point in each game? Um, here's the thing, right? Like, I expected Prime Batman to die a lot more than he did. Um, but what it came down to is they couldn't go attack Batman. If they go attack Batman, that means they're bypassing the Carnage Silver Surfers. That is just going to go munch on their team more the next the next round. So, like, Prime Batman, by and large, didn't die. Um, but Batman Ally was huge because Hope, both Porters, um, had stealth. Um, and then Scott Crampton has stealth as well. Um, so the way I had positioned my team, I <coughs> knew against Ed that the big, his quasi-energy explosion thing was going to come off and happen. Um, and I couldn't reach him because he chose map. I went first. I couldn't get to anybody on his team because he shut off Psyblast with Cosmo at nine range. So there was nothing I could do to kill, um, that, um, Phoenix Sentinel, um, very effectively. I guess looking back on it, I had enough shields to where I could probably... But see, I'm capped at 9 range too. So looking back on it, maybe I could have gotten a square to 9 range on the Caddy Wampus side of uh, Cosmo to maybe have side-blasted Phoenix Sentinel. But um, it, was, it would have been rough to do so. Um, so... That was huge, right? So I had free smoke with Batman. I put everybody in smoke. I barriered around my surfers uh, on the back row to try to protect them. Um, and I don't even know if I needed to do that. I need to. Re I, I, was, I have to look at Phoenix Sentinel again real quick. Um, but so Ed went up, uh, got his big <laughs> alpha, uh, got his alpha and shot, and my. Um, surfer, he targeted a surfer and a Scott Porter, and I rolled out of the attack. Uh, oh. cor correction, my surfer rolled out of the attack, black shirt Porter was one-shotted, and the splash damage thingy didn't get to go off. Oh, that sucks. Because Porter was dead. And he was like, is yep. enhancement optional? And I'm like, it is indeed not optional. Um, so, because it was after resolutions, yeah, within three squares of them. So, like, he deals two penetrating damage to your whole team as well. Um, but then after that, I went up and shot his, killed his Phoenix Sentinel. Um, and then... Um, I actually pulse wave of Porter that game. Um, the biggest thing with my team was, besides having the surfers, white shirt Porter is absolutely insane. Right, guys? Yeah. We can agree, right? You played white shirt Porter on unthemed. I think if yeah. you build any 300 modern team, your first 25 points is white shirt Porter. I agree. I think most um, people agree with that. And and the Sinestro Horror, like Yep. So uh, yeah. um so what I had with my team is I was able to do he was clumped up um and I didn't have any really good targets because of his stealth to be able to uh shoot and not have to deal with um Mastermind uh MOE, the Inquisitor. So yep. I brute moved um Scott Porter out and pulse waved his entire team and knocked it off of elevation and stuff. Um, it was fun. And then that's that's gross. Then Carnage Silver Surfer had a target to go attack. Um, so that's how that went. Ed had a very a very well built and ingenious team though. That uh, full map reach with shields and his wild card because he was also playing Hope Summers. Um, he could. He could really deal some damage with that team. It was really super cool. Um, but I ended up winning that game 
um, 50, he got 50, and I got 204 points, because he was also playing Scott Crampton. Um, and then, next up, should be you as, you remember who you played? I played Christine Redmond. Okay, what happened in that game? Uh, so she was playing uh, Prime Spidey. Um, I won map. Uh, Prime Spidey with like Arachnite um, and Gwen Stacy, Porters, um, and Black Cat. I won map and I luckily have a plan against Prime Spidey with my team, uh, which comes down to if they let me pick map. Um, I go to Otherworld Castle, um, which a lot of people might be like, well, why would you do that? There's a ton of elevator on it. There's actually a hidey hole that I can create for my team where literally the only targets they can go after are Ghost Rider if they want to go from the front or Cap if they want to go from the back. Either way requires 11s. Um, so uh, she decided to not go for it. She extended Spider-Man all the way out to go kill Carnage, and then Spider-Man immediately exploded. Um, and then I took apart Arachnite like two turns later. Yeah, because you had a pretty big score in that one. Like, you scored 220 points. Yeah. Um, I don't think I gave up much, if anything. I gave up Carnage. Right. Um, and then, Nick, you played Emily... It, it did. Um, Emily played fantastically. Uh, she took me, so I guess roll off wise, she won map. Uh, she had taken me to, I think it was Avengers Tower, if I recall. Let me check real quick. It was Avengers Tower. Um, so she ran Double Surfer, Black Heart, Black Skull, uh, Black Symbiote, Necron Porter with Indigo Ring, Daredevil Hulk with Motorcycle. Um, her team was super strong against mine. Uh, her setup was, I don't know, well, well rehearsed, I think. Uh, did she, did she do the, uh, equip Necron with the symbiote? She did, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, about that. yeah, it's strong. It, it was hard to deal with, to be honest. Um, I think we finished our game, she had 220 off of me and I had 100 off of her. Uh, just was not meant to go in my favor. She had played that squad really, really well. There wasn't much I could do about it, to be honest. So, hats off to Emily for whooping on me that game. Right. Um, anything really in particular that you learned from that that uh, matchup? I mean, yeah, like like Az just touched on. Uh, Necron with the Black Symbiote is something I'm going to borrow for the future. It's right. quite fun. I is mean, it... not fun to play against, but it's... This gives him stealth, right? That's the big thing. Yep. It does. But I mean, yeah. once he heals back, you heal him, what, once? Is it once? And then he loses stealth? He doesn't have stealth on the on his starting click. No, okay, right. yeah, yeah, okay. He, he basically just to protect him from Surfer. Yep. I mean, him having that pretty solid reach, sidestep stealth, he can stay in the back and shoot out, and you can't touch him. Right. Unless you really, really overcommit. And it worked pretty well for her, I would say. Um, um, Indigo but... Ring is, I think, undervalued. I know everyone's still on the Sinestro Core Ring, which I am as well, but Indigo with Porter and Surfers does work really well. Yeah, it does. Um, so round four, uh, that put me at table two. I lost to Mr. Dylan Kassenbaum playing Warriors, which was Death Metal Wonder Woman, Prime Wonder Woman, MOE Killmonger, um, with two caps and two porters. Um, and no tarot deck. So shout out to Dylan. Uh, it was really nice to meet Dylan. Very nice guy. Um, my team with a 14 attack needed eights to shoot his team. I won initiative. We went to the chemical plant. He moved up halfway. I went out uh, with my first attack. 
needing an eight. Uh, rolled a crit hit. He community probed it. I probed it with my surfer missed. Uh, he community probed me into a miss. I probed it with my surfer from Inquisitor missed, and community probed and critically missed. Oof. So um, about right. Then he went up with his Wonder Woman and shot my surfer. Uh, he missed his shape change and his super senses and died. And then I proceeded to not land a single hit until the very end. Um, when I did, he revived his Scott Porter with Death Metal Wonder Woman, and I scored zero points at 215. Yeah, so. but he also... So I watched uh, his game against Drasafa that's on Dial H today. Um, he had Cathan on Death Metal Wonder Woman. Yeah. Specifically to deal her a damage so that she would get prob. Um, prob and, um, oh, what's his, oh, yeah, oh, what's his nuts? Cap gives him charge. Charge. So she could use her flurry on that click. Yeah, and he had, like, a shit ton of leadership, so, like, yep. he didn't need, he didn't need uh, her leadership for any reason. Yeah. So. I just thought that was, that was kind of cool. Yeah, he charge flurried me. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. It was a, <laughs> yeah, that happened. It was a very good team of Dylans. So, um, and so like much we talked about it at one point. We did, and um, I think it's the defend team to play. Um, I am I am not typically so convinced of something so thoroughly, uh, but it, it needs twenty two from range. You know, up close, right? Like it's one weakness is probably camo, but camo's only attacking you once compared to surfers attacking you twice, um, and with the defend. They, you know, Camo can get up to a 15, but that's still a 7 because they're 21s. Um, because he didn't play a tarot deck, right? Like, there's cards with Defend and Perplex and, yep. you know, ESD and these tons of great cards for a Defend team. He just didn't play a deck. Um, Dylan may have been able to win the tournament if he had played a tarot deck. I'm... Not 100% convinced of that because he made top eight. So, obviously, somebody cracked the shell at some point. Um, but, um, yeah, very good team of Dylans. And, uh, I mean, I would if I could have rolled an eight, right, I probably would have had a better chance. So, maybe somebody just finally rolled. Um, rolled the eight. I know he said in his one interview um, that I, up to a certain point, nobody had pulled the star on him. Yeah, Star was my last card against yeah. him. So, Star is probably a big deal there. Yeah, Star was my last card on my deck, too. So, um, Maybe it would have done better if I had rolled a Star. I guess it would have, right? If I had the Star on my Alpha, I would have crit hit him. Crit hit him. Yeah. Um, then your next round as you beat Evan Needman. Yeah, uh, he was playing... Um, let me think here. It was double porter, carded surfer. He's playing a Racco. It was Genesis. Um, Kid Thanos was on the team, or he might have swapped into Kid Thanos. Uh, Prime Hulk. Um, this game started out real bad for me. Um, I was up in my my little position on Otherworld Castle. He double perplexed range on Scott Porter so that he could target my whole squad, which looking back on it now actually shouldn't have happened because of the way that perplexes and pulse wave works. Um, and he, with no rerolls needed, crit hit my team with a pulse wave and just killed Jen and Carnage. Um, but I just kind of tried to take it in stride and then uh, managed to fight back, and I think that game was fairly close pointed, if I remember correct. Yeah, it was ninety to one twenty five, or yeah. one twenty five on your end. Yeah, managed uh, my carded surfer just managed to be able to get out out maneuver from away from the rest of the team, um, and then Cap and Ghost Rider were able to kind of fend off the close attackers. 
Um, but yeah, that was a very good team. Um, perplexing range on Scott Porter for Pulse Wave is just really good. Mm-hmm. And uh, Scott Porter is the reason why I think Jennifer Kale can't really work right now. Uh, that To be fair, I did tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, Scott Porter can Pulse Wave your team as... Yeah. And you were like, I could use my powers, though. Well, the, I honestly, it's the crit hit that did it. But... I, I know. That's, that, I mean, like... I, it'll, it'll happen. Yeah, it'll, yeah, yeah. It, it'll, it, it'll, you know, happen. It'll, it'll happen. But you rallied back from it, right? But 90 to 125, right, makes you want to pee your pants by the end of the match. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was... Right. It was a little terrifying. Yeah, uh, But something sure. that... Um, what I was mentioning about um, how uh, perplexed and... Uh, pulse waves work because this came up in my game my next round too so i figured i would address it here if you perplex scott porter's range for pulse wave and your perplex is within the extended pulse waves range mm. that perplex him it will shut off the perplex before it gets to targeting oh yeah so you'll be able to go out to shut off power six square five six squares but you will only target at the reduced uh, pulse wave ring. Right. Just something for, for people to keep in Keep in mind. Yep. Um, Nick, I'm looking at your uh, round four here and it, it doesn't look great. You no, know, it, oh, no. it also was not. Um, so yeah, I played against Dalton Byer as well. Yep. We had a pretty slow moving game. He uh, he ran barrier. Obviously, um, I want to say we played on Harley's rooftop, if I recall, but I could be wrong. Um, I think just with his terrain mixed with barrier, he had himself barriered in pretty good. And with my team, there wasn't much to destroy. Um, you know, not being able to heal with Necron, and you know, not trying to overcommit, there wasn't much I could do, so I think it was a lot of positioning early on. Um, and I believe the only thing that died for me was Batman. I think towards the end, I finally got an opening to commit, went through, and he had a... I think it was the six with his cap wolf, and he had a Hulk in, and the Hulk ended up one-tapping my Batman with a few minutes to go. Oh, wow. Oh, you got Legacy so, Hulk? Yeah, I did. So... Yeah, it's that it's, was really. I mean, I don't know. I think I had Cap Wolf on like a second to last click. I think I sunk in like five or six clicks to uh, his Ghost Rider. Like I put in work, but it just wasn't enough. And then towards the end, you know, Hulk not needing much to hit got the forty points off of me, and it was a forty to zero loss. Yeah, so I looked at the I, ha- I looked at Holly's apartment in passing, but there was a time when um that map was too powerful whenever you could set your immovable terrain yeah they couldn't literally yeah. traverse the elevation right yeah but now you can because you can just hop up on it for the one yeah. uh and i was looking to see if they left that part of the map in there when they shrunk it and then they sure did they sure did um <laughs> So if terrain was legal in silver, this would have to have been a banned map, um, like the jets and stuff, because you could just totally slow your opponent down completely. Um, I did that a lot. I, think that's, I did that. That a was lot. a new one for me. I actually didn't I hadn't experienced it before, but that yeah seemed to kind of be the case. It, that it was, was a, well. That was an that was an OG twenty eighteen trick, Nick. Ah, uh, yeah. See before. Post I my time and before my time. A ruling that those uh, those terrain, like the jet and that, functions like terrain markers, and they can't be placed on transition squares. Yeah, that would probably be great because you would have to block it with the new terrain markers. You'd have to TK them into place, yeah. um, which wouldn't be awful to really do, but I mean, it requires some extra work to wear. Before some, I would just be like, "Okay, I won map row. We're going to Harley's apartment." Conk. Good luck getting your overdrive over here when I barrier the other stairway. Yeah. 
and then Fuck. and then uni shoots you from thirteen squares away. But that was a that was a as, much as, as he does. That was a much different time. So um, yeah, guess who's back in silver, guys? Guess who has another hundred points to support him? Yay. <laughs> every I think it's a, you. every every tent pole that was ever in silver is the answer. True. Um, so. Round five, uh, Nick, you're you're pretty much out at this point. Uh, as you that have a done. you have a chance to get in at this point. Um, yeah. I have a loss, so I do have to win myself. Um, I go against Aaron Morgan, um, and uh, there was a couple things in our matchup. Uh, Aaron only had short maps. Um, Aaron had all of his attackers equipped um he was playing monster <laughs> monster silver surfers and he's told me he we went to the injustice gang hideout no um maybe no not that one it was a dc map um ace chemicals a street um, the Batcave? No, Game Show, Haunted Pier. Hmm. I am Oscorp. Construction site. No, I want to be very specific on this map because I want folks to be able to pull up this map and look at it. So hold on just a second while I... It was a map with indoor and outdoor. Um... And it has that one square of elevated that doesn't have any transition squares on it. Oh, Oscorp Warehouse? Well, Oscorp Warehouse, yes. Yes. That, he put me on that map to go first, and he played a Colossal. So, that map, if you turn it the other way, the Colossal has to be outside. And I put him on the side where the elevated was on his uh, starting area, uh, which I'll be honest, I didn't even know it was there. Like it's just poorly marked on the paper map, and my surfer just flew up there and just started shooting things. Good thing I had improved targeting elevated, um, because I was I tried to do something and he was like, "You're on elevated." I'm like, D "The fuck? Like what?" <laughs> I, I was legitimately surprised, um, and. Um, I was like, "Sorry, dude. Like, uh, is that hello?" And I went and I went and had called over Barnstable, and I was like, "Did is this right?" And he's like, "Yeah, it's just elevated with no transition squares." And I'm like, "Well, that's fucking bad." <laughs> if you could just put, you could abuse that. Now, are you likely to be able to abuse it? No, but you could. Um, but you know, unfortunately, Aaron didn't have. Um, much barrier, much defense on his monster surfers, um, and my Carnage Silver Surfers crossed the small map and kind of munched on his team. Um, but Aaron and everybody else that's listening, pack a big map and don't equip your don't equip your surfers. He had no way to separate my surfers other than his border, but I had more barrier than he did. So King Killmonger with community rerolls. R r r uh, rules the day. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, that was round five. It was 300 to zero. And then as you were sitting right next to me and cost me my chance at the finals. <laughs> yeah, man. I actually, uh, I wish our uh, our rounds had been reversed because I would have loved to play against Aaron because, you know, double surfer teams is what my team is made to fight. But uh, never played against one. <laughs> um, but no, I played against Rob Olger, um, who came in second. Second, right? Mm -hmm. um, his defenders team: um, Prime Hulk, uh, King of the Underworld, Ghost Rider, Arachnite, Carnage Surfer, and then Double Porter. Um, my so I don't like using this as an excuse, but my dice were pretty bad the whole day. 
um, a lot of the weekend, actually. And I felt like I played the game as tight as I could. I probably made a few mistakes, and my dice just didn't bail me out, and Rob's dice were pretty good. His Hulk was, like, top click at the end of his first turn. Um, based because of a six five six rolls on healing, um, and then just big uh, big timed uh, super senses. So I ended up losing. I'm pretty sure I lost uh, with a zero point loss there. Yeah, you did. It was eighty to zero. Yeah, yeah. So like, not like the score is not an indicative of like, or the score shows that like it wasn't a like rollover game. It was a winnable game for sure, right? And then Nick, you um, will beat Daniel Valentine um, in match twenty four by ten points. Did you? So you had a pretty good game there. It was pretty tight. It looks like y'all had some back and forth. Yeah, that was. I don't know. I do think that was kind of my. Uh, no, not to take away from anybody, but I think that was my kind of like just have fun game so we definitely we were both in the same mindset so we kind of just went at it um he ran it was like cap wolf ghost surfer uh i think it was the super rare brother voodoo not the not the prime and i he had a captain america couple of porters i think his team was i think i can find that if that's that good or not but um it was it was over pretty late in the game. We didn't really do much. It kind of bounced back and forth. We both missed quite a bit early on, if I recall. Um, but I know towards the end, I ended up taking his Cap Wolf Go Surfer. And I, th- I don't remember what it was. I think it might have been his brother Voodoo as well. And I think he had just taken out a couple figures from me uh, in the same time frame. But we were both kind of, I mean, everyone was exhausted this weekend. We hit that just have fun, I don't know, outlook towards the end there. But sure. Nothing crazy. Just uh, gotcha. wrapped up the day and was ready to get some food like everyone else was. Sure. Sure. So um, I'll talk a little bit about my next three games. Uh, my top 16 game I played against Logan, Logan Growney. Um, I almost lost that game. Um, I got a little greedy. He sent out his, um, I won Matt, I won initiative. He was playing an unthemed team. Um, I won initiative, went to the chemical plant. He sent out his world's finest and I popped the star. Um, and I was like, I need to go out there and crit hit this. Um, which I did not. So I lost my white shirt porter pretty quickly, um, unfortunately. Uh, but I was able to just move my team up with Green Lantern Batman. He packed up the whole team, barriered around, um, outside of the reach of his, of his, um, no, his world's finest was in reach, but I switched to King Killmonger, uh, because his entire team of attackers was equipped and King Killmonger saved that game from me. Um, I had to use my community probs on his critical hits against my Killmonger. Um, But um, I ended up mopping up uh, Logan's team 300 to 50 um, after that initial uh, nearly costly whoopsie. Um, So that was a a good game, but uh, I could have got a little too greedy. If that greediness had paid off, I would have won the game on turn one because I would have just KO'd his um, World's Finest on turn one. Um, So don't break first turn immunity when your opponent has a brute Dark Phoenix Scott Porter to send across the map. Um, So um, top eight... I beat Cole Williams uh, in a very tight match. He was playing the Araco Surfers, um, and he same thing. I won initiative. Took went to the chemical plant. He moved up, barriered with his Sinestro Scott, 
Um, I brute moved my Sinestro Scott out. Um, pulled out the um, Fire Hydrant. Blasted down two of his barriers and pulse waved his entire team for two. Disabling his surfers. Um, and take because it knocks them off of the move and attack, move and attack thing. The double attack clicks. Um... And healed my surfers because I killed his stop sign with a symbiote Scott Porter. Um, which is just absolutely nuts. Um, but that ended up being 85 to 100. Uh, actually very close. Um, his surfers were able to rally back a little bit. Um, he had some rollouts. Um, but uh, I ended up, I think, KOing his surfer. His Mephisto one time, and maybe something else small on the team. Um, but then top four, I played against Rob uh, Ogre, and um, this one was a close match. Um, I was ahead uh, until the very end of the game, and Rob basically won the game <coughs> on last action. Um, his last action scored him 65 points. Um, but, um, my surfers, same thing. I won. We were on the chemical plant. I think I played all three of those games on the chemical plant. Um, shout out Nathan Funemeyer for showing me the ropes of that match, that map last year. Um, but Rob, I went up alpha his team. Uh, unfortunately, he had what, as the spider super senses everywhere, basically. Um... He had a Rachnite, you know, everybody was copying Spider-Man TA that had senses, you know, it was, can you, you can use Ghost Rider, um, so, uh, it was a close game, if, uh, and Rob slowly moved up, and I burned through all of my good tarot cards immediately, so my alpha was not aided by a good tarot card either. Um, I think it was actually aided by a bad tarot card. Um, yeah, you had the Seven of Pentacles. Yes, <clears throat> that's what it was. Yeah, my Alpha had that card. Yep, you got it. Um, so, it was a good game with Rob. Rob was a very great guy. Um, and congrats to Alex Mater for winning the modern portion of the championship. And congratulations to Isaac for winning the overall championship. Um, so, I know it was a little long-winded there. We do have some questions to answer, and we do need to talk about King Kong still. Um, so, Luminati, uh, says, The biggest surprise of CCO, the return of Arachnite or the continued dominance of Prime Spidey? Um, Arachnite is not a surprise. Um, it, because Scott Porter's dictate that you only have to have 250 points of a theme team. Mm -hmm. And like Rob's Defenders team, you just go in HC units and you click Defenders and it works out pretty well that the can use your powers Ghost Rider, Hulk and Arachnite and Surfer all have Defenders. Um, not saying the team builds itself, but a lot of these teams just build themselves. Yeah. Um, I mean, Prime Spidey is not really a surprise either. Like, yeah, he lost the Necrosword, but he's still really good. Right. Yeah, and, you know, I talked about this in one of the discords. Um, you look at those top eight matchups for Alex, and um, a lot of folks just don't want to play Barrier, right? And which I get it. Uh, but if I look at like Alex's top 16 matchup, he defeated Matt Ventura. I don't know what Matt was playing. Um, I think units... I think I saw Clay just post that he has the links. Um, let me look at who Alex went through in top 16. And I'll give you an analysis of why Prime Spider-Man did so good. Uh, Matt Ventura, who needs friends. So, yeah, so Matt was playing with only Scott Porter's barrier. Yeah. And no MOE. 
So yeah. guess what Spider-Man does to that team? Mm-hmm. He just goes and fucks and attacks it. Mm-hmm. Just brrr. now there's dice rolls and you know there's map rolls and all this other stuff, but by and large, um. I go look at this, and Alex defeated Matt 175 to 0. So, there's no defense on that team, right? You have to want to be able to play a hard barrier team to be able to defeat Prime Spider Man or MOE, or actually both, right? I'm saying kind of my team was built for that. Now, I know mm-hmm. Nick, or um, as your team was too. With the you know high defense values uh, in Kale, uh, but then Alex beat Josafa. Uh, yeah, I watched that game. Now you can tell me, but I mean Josafa had a really good detective theme team here, very very well put together. Yes, it was a lot of fun. But what I see here, no defense. It seems awful, darn squishy. Yep. And Joe missed a lot of important attacks and then just died. Right. So, like, there's no defense on this team. Prime Spider-Man just goes and eats it. Um, But that's probably... Uh, Joe Safa's team is probably one of the most surprising best teams out of the tournament to do so well. He was just wrecking people all day. Uh, but Prime yeah, Spider, also- but Prime Spider Man loves squishy figures. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Alex was his only loss in 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 modern in the tournament. Yeah, but that was the loss that took him out. Yep. Um. So let me look at the next. Although one to that- be fair, Joe's team does have double barrier if he needs it. The four is not eight's not enough. That's true. Eight's not enough. That's the problem. It's got to be. It's got to be sixteen. So, um, but that's why Prime Spider-Man does so well. These teams just don't have the defense built in. Um, I, I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody's team building, but if I look at Josafa's team and he goes second, Prime Spider-Man just comes over there. You know what I mean? Like, not much you can do at that point. There's nothing you. I mean, like, it's just a crit. It's not. It's not like it's a big critical analysis here. The figures are just going to be sitting there on the map. Prime Spider Man's going to come over with a fucking yeet machine and yeet it. Right. Yeah. Not. Not everything on Josafa's team has shape change and super senses. You know, there are things that he can. Prime Spider Man has two bolts, right? Yeah. So he can just. Target here, target here. If you hit your shape change, okay. Target here. If you hit your super senses, okay. Yeet, yeet. Right? And your team just starts falling apart. So, I mean, Josafa's did very well in the tournament. But that's why we're not surprised at Prime Spider-Man doing so well. Yeah. Um, and then Alex defeated... <coughs> um, knocked out Isaac, who was also playing Prime Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, but... If I go look at Isaac's team as well, Isaac's team had the MOE, but no uh, barrier. So I also just want to say the biggest surprise to me out of the modern tournament is that Isaac felt the need to flex on everyone else and not play Scott Porter. Yeah, but I mean his team worked really well, but with no barrier. To make yeah. to make Prime Spider Man have to deal use his super strength to deal with that, he's able to just come over and lay something down to defeat Kill King Killmonger. Yeah. So, and then um, obviously he beats Rob in the finals, and Rob has four squares of barrier and no MOE Killmonger. So, um, you know, Alex probably would have negated his. Uh, Killmonger issue by not equipping his Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I mean that's a big one. Just don't equip your Spider-Man. Um, but 
I, I mean, that's why I'm not surprised. Yep. I mean... Yeah, I mean, Prime Spidey's still just really good. He's just really good. People aren't building to defend against them. Against him. So... Yeah. Um... But, Luminati, that's to answer your question there. Um... And then, so I'm just working down the list. We'll talk Kong here in a second. Uh, and Jacob Springer, um, did y'all have any other teams you wanted to highlight out of the top cut? I mean, Joseph's team's got to be Joe's it for me. One. Yeah. yeah. I think um, that was my favorite as well. The thing you Shaggy played was quite fun. Right. Yeah, I mean... Um, I mean, Clark Grantham wants us to talk about Miss Marvel here next. Um, and he made top 16. Um, but, like, for the most part, Clark's playing Prime Spider Man, Captain America, Scott Porter, Scott Porter. So, like, all the really good pieces with Miss Marvel sprinkled in. Um, so, why do we think that Miss Marvel is not doing as well as she should? That's a good question. I don't know. She's, I mean, she's very good, but she just dies to a carded surfer. Like she just right. gets, she gets hit by one, she gets hit once from a carded surfer and just dies. That's right. Now she does have shape change. Shape change. That's right. I thought she had senses too, but I guess not. No, nah, shape change in bone. Right. <laughs> Which and she'll probably be tiny when that happens, but I mean this this is a very offensive team again. This is you know, there's very little defense behind it, but you know, Spider Man and Cap are probably doing a lot of the heavy lifting and then Miss Marvel's, you know, kind of the backup attackers. Right. She's following along, doing empowers, doing blue ring stuff. Um I mean, all that makes sense. Yeah. I mean uh, she just I think Clark to answer your question she's just a bit squishy for 50 points right um now look I want to say this um they should probably do something with Carnage Surfer yeah probably but, but if they don't you gotta figure play you gotta figure it out so um I did just realize what he was doing, though, because I was looking at his sideline. I'm like, why does he have Red Raven on here? Oh, he picks Teen Titans with the Miss Marvels. Yeah, or Blue Lantern. So, or, yeah, so, or Blue Lantern ring for the blue one. And then oh, the other sure, one, sure. The other one the can other pick one Teen Titans, Titans, yeah. And uh, Red Raven can also come out for Scott. No, he's not, he's not enough points. Oh, Red Ravens requires He's like 40 fifty or more, forty not. or more. Okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Reverse crappy. Yeah. So then, Miss um, Marvel. Yeah, it's gotta be Miss Marvel. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's a that's a cool idea. Yeah. So very well built team, Clark. It's very very cool. Um, I feel like she doesn't hit hard enough, though. I mean, am I wrong? Survivability is one thing, but I, I always mean, thought yeah. she was super weak for what she. I mean, even pre, like you know. Modern whatever beat sticks for fifty. I mean, she's eleven. I for, thought she was. She's eleven for three flurry. So, yeah, but I mean, I don't know. And then she's pow- shadowed by forty other pieces that are right superior. In, I feel like now. That, yeah, if you're playing her in like a a formation like he's doing, she's like an eleven for five. Right. I'm just looking clever, to see. But I mean, I'm looking to see who beat Clark. Cole Williams did, so the Araco surfers beat him. The, the surfers beat him? That doesn't surprise me. Right. Yeah, it was 300 to 105, so uh, Clark got in some hits, uh, but it looks like to me Cole just went in there and did what surfers do. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mean, we've got to have a watch list. And keep in mind, this is really like the first major modern event post Worlds. Yep. Yes, it has been the. I mean, there might have been some smaller ones out there, so forgive me if somebody else has been playing a smaller event out there that we've forgotten to talk about. Um, 
but by and large, this has been the only modern event post Worlds. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, and since Worlds, it's been the Prime Spidey Carnage Surfer show. Yeah. I do feel like there's a good bit out there. People are still kind of figuring out what works post rotation. I mean, I expected to see more uh, Pegasus caps, but I feel like there will be more come Rock and Worlds, maybe. But yeah, um, I'm there's looking, so much out there. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, the since the 2023 World Championship, <laughs> there has only been um, the Rock Online win a map. Um, Shameless plug right there. I mean, I did win that one, but um, <laughs> it was a you know a six person event. Um, Australian Nationals, um, but that was one with Surfer and X Men Surfers. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it is what it is, guys. We got to yeah. plan to deal with it. Um, so Eric, I did want to add on Prime Bats that like he's just good. I mean, like... Um, Cheapest Green Lantern TA you can get. Yeah. Uh, Barrier, Outwit. I mean, Hope copied most of his power, most of her powers from him or the Porter. So that was Perplex, Sidestep, or, um, you know, Barrier, Outwit. And then my whole team loved having Sidestep Green Lantern to get into position. Um, especially on the uh, square maps. Um, so, uh, Giordano asks, um, is there too big a disparity between theme and non-theme due to Scott's? Yes. <coughs> yeah, I could agree with that. Yeah. Being the person that played non-theme. Yeah, was there even a non-theme team in top 16 out of 67 players? I'm looking real quick. It's loading up. Uh, I think uh, maybe... Isaac. Isaac was non theme. Um, Isaac. Yeah, he was on theme. And I know Logan was. Logan was. Yeah, I'm looking here. Theme, theme, theme. Yeah, there's they Logan. Two. At two out of sixteen. Yep. That that tells you the gap. And and one of those is Isaac. <laughs> right. Who could play like uno but i like I, I look at his team and it's like almost themed it's very close yeah so like yeah he just took what was good from one theme team and what was good from the other which is fine um i, like, I don't I get these together yeah but he almost played like you know, he almost played the, you know, the def a Defenders version. He almost played an Avengers version. Um, but, you know, it could have been one of those things. Isaac also could have just played it to make a point. Yep. Um, so, um, keep looking through stuff here. Uh, did that, did that. Um, Peter, you always ask some really good questions. Um this is what is the longest time you have gone with acquiring a figure but not putting the figure on the board? Um, ten years? How long have y'all been playing Hero Clicks? Uh, I started in Secret Wars Battle World. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> I guess Peter, the answer to that question is there's probably a lot of figures that I've bought and collected over the years that have never played with ever. Now, if you mean by gone out acquires, like I specifically went and looked for this particular figure and never got to play. Uh, Captain America and the Avengers. Yeah. Um, right. I got Arno Stark and still have never played him on a map. Yeah. There's time for that, though. Yeah, he's legal in silver now. Yeah, yep. I, know. I have like three <laughs> Arno Stark teams built. Right. Um, but yeah, Peter, I'm going to say 10 years. Um, probably because I went out and acquired the lanterns, the entities, and I never played... I don't think my butcher ever got played. So, 
Um, at this point, is it a better idea that I need to stream further streamline my collection? Um, I don't know. I'm a collector, so I've got a whole a quarter of my house, pretty much. I don't know, probably less than that. Probably like 20% or less of my floor space dedicated to hero clicks. So, uh, no help there. That's a good bet. Uh, we talked about what we were surprised to see. Um, and then tarot deck, I don't know. I've got to change my tarot deck around. I'm not playing the, um, the queen of wands anymore. I've got to play a different wands. Yeah. So queen of wands, I, I came to the realization that you have to, you have to get better use out of it than your opponent, especially in this environment. Yeah. Like I played it because I have cap. Um but yeah, playing it with like multiple surfers and like MOE just feels dangerous. Yeah, it ended up being a little dangerous for me. Um so I'm probably just going to like put in some junk card in there. Yeah. Like the um, like the support card. Well, maybe not the support card, but I don't know, like the Queen of Wands, right? Like, yeah, they, something tempo based, I guess. Um, or even the per, or the, the perplex card. The perplex card wouldn't hurt me too much. Yeah. Um, specific cards of each sweets that I play, no, but I will say, uh, there are cards that are getting played that blows my mind. Um, because since the rise of Carnage Surfer and Scott Porter, I just pretend the Pensai and the Pulse Wave cards don't exist. Um, I they will never touch my tarot deck. The Pensai card's great. That's not no. <laughs> I have not played that card since Porter came out. Yeah, since and since I was a big supporter of it beforehand. Carnage but... Surfer. Uh, I am not giving that card to opposing Carnage Surfers. No, thank you. Well, keep in mind, like, from my perspective, I get to use it first, so I'm, uh, I'm probably cool. going to make it count. Uh, I don't know. And, and that's my, my philosophy on the Pulse Wave card, too. Is just, it's just The Pulse Wave uh, card, you can't, but... Um, uh, the Star... I'm a big fan of the Enhancement and, and Power cards. Yeah. Those, yes, the Power card is one of my favorites. I think it's seeing play more now, but I was heavily fan of it, or a heavy fan of it for a while, but uh, the Plaython plus six, Endering to Endering. Page of Pentacles. Yes. Uh, I, I mean, I've always played, I don't know, <laughs> three placements, a big a big thing I try to get, you know, utilized on my teams, but that card's slowly coming around. It's played more and more, but I think it's a good bit of fun. Yeah, that card's really good. Um, the one that I thought was neat, um, that would definitely help out if you draw it, uh, is the Hanged Man. I like the Hanged Man. Yeah, so when this card is put into play, you may deal one unavoidable damage to a friendly character. If you do, while this card is play is in play, that character modifies their combat values plus one. So you can deal one unavoidable and then heal it right back up with your black shirt porter, which your opponent doesn't get to do. Yep. So... Less. Yeah, and you get plus one to all stats. Yep. That card's great. Yep. So I might actually think about taking the star out and playing that. Really? Maybe. It is on my list of considerations to do. I'd be down to, to talk that over. Yeah, because it, it gives you it gives your surfers extra reach. Yep. I mean, obviously, I'm playing it with surfer. I don't think I want to play. Um, I don't, I don't think I want to change my team much for Adepticon, depending on the release of next phase and what's in next phase. Um. So. Yeah, I mean that's just one extra reach. It, it, actually, it's two extra reach because you get one extra movement, and one extra range. Um, and one extra damage. So now in four damage, you're at five. And it also matters in matchups where you have to punch. Because now you're 12 for four up close. So. Yeah. Um, Not a bad idea. 
I can dig Animate it. Animate it. I like it. The black shirt porter makes that. And then if you you know like if it comes up late and your black shirt porter's dead, just don't do it. Yeah, it being an optional thing is is what makes it yeah much better. Yeah. Um. So that's a really good one. Cole uh, played that against me, and uh, his porter went. His <coughs> surfer was hitting really really hard. Um. Because that means. I don't know. I really thought about that one a lot. I gotta think about it some more. Because if you get the plus ones, um, the perplexes are even better, um, and you get the heal because you already didn't have the plus one from white shirt porter. So all of your perplexes can go into reach because you have a RCE to twelve, hangman to thirteen, and porter to fourteen. Yeah. Um, you can get back some. So, um, anyways, Tarot's interesting. I'll be glad when they retire, though. <laughs> um, Same. so that answers all the questions. We can round out a little bit here. It's getting kind of late for, I know for you as you were, you okay to talk about Kong? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Uh, great. Me and Nick are excited. Yeah. Y'all are. It's all I've Better heard day. about since uh, since y'all saw him on the table. It's almost like y'all didn't want to play and just <laughs> talk about Kong. You're like you saw it on the display from Dial H, and you're like, "Let's play Kong." Yeah, he's great. I got to hold it before they put it out when they were doing their little photo up in the hallway, and got to a uh, I don't know revel in it for a minute and super excited. They, they before they were like, "Nobody touch it." I got to touch it. So. Yeah. How did the flock? How did the flocking feel? Uh, I mean, it's, it feels like you'd expect it. It just feels like, you know, felt on it. But I still really, really want, you know, two, three of them. Right. Um, so let's talk about what he does. He has um, 21 clicks at 500 <coughs> points, 15 clicks at 300 points, 11 clicks at 200 points, and four clicks at five, 50 so our first question that I want to make sure that we answer is before we talk about what y'all want to do. Real quick, at 500 points, he has the highest printed defense and hero clicks ever. That's right, 22. Um, uh, who asked in the, 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 the OMA? Who asked the OMA question? Uh, um, uh, Amato Romero. Oh, Amato Romero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... At 300 points, it feels like he's probably not an OMA. No. no. Not for competitive. No. I mean, his he... reach is a little bit limited. Uh, at Cathon, he would be a 21, 22 from range. I mean, that's not nothing. Um, yeah, but even with two costed actions a turn, um, he doesn't destroy blocking as far as like his improved movements. Mobility is a big issue. Mobility is a real even on a small map. I mean, yeah, three turns across map essentially. Um, so probably I, not. I think, he'll find, I think he'll find a home at fifty. I could see reason for two hundred. Right. The big thing is, is that I think what really helps him out is that he can uh, be Cathond. Yep. Um, which really helps him out at fifty. Especially when you talk about pairing him with the monster MOEs. Um, And uh, you know what? In theme format, though, this guy is a celebrity, too. Sure. So he can just be played with Scott Porters in the theme format. (laughs) That's very true. He can. Yeah. So uh, that's. His keywords are all fantastic. Yeah. Animal, celebrity. Yeah, he's missing. Deity, monster, mystical, and ruler. Yeah. Yeah. He's missing, he he's missing Brute, yeah, so Dark Phoenix can make him attack. Um, that would be so broken, though. But he has a couple of traits. Kong can reduce penetrating damage, which pairs really well with his Invincible. Uh, Kong deals penetrating damage if he occupies elevated terrain or is attacking one or more characters with Flight or Colossal. Uh, Kong has Safeguard Outwit, and then if an opposing force has more characters than yours, Kong may be given two costed actions and may use Willpower twice a turn. 
Uh, special attack power of strength, super strength, and quake. When he uses quake, he still he deals three damage instead. And after resolutions, generate a Kong wreckage terrain marker. Um, and then he has a stop click with stop impervious regen, as regen is free, but only if he has two action tokens. Um, do we know what a Kong uh, no. terrain marker wreckage marker does yet? Nope. It wasn't in their was that video. Not all the ones? Was it not in their video? Uh, the ones that are in um, the ones that are in his box are the twisted metal, um, the banana pile, and the bug. Uh, the the crush bug. bug. Uh, which crush dried bug is uh, hindering that characters holding this terrain can use poison if they do remove it from the game. The banana pile is uh, hindering characters in these squares have power, heal one click, don't care, and the don't twisted care. metal oh. is blocking. Uh, this is when this is targeted by a destroy action. Before destroying it, deal one damage to each adjacent character. Oh, wait. Hang on. Those are all titled Kong Wreckage. Oh, uh, okay. So it's any of those things. It can be um, one of those three, it seems. Did not catch that before. Yeah, it says Terrain Kong Wreckage. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah, okay, I see it there. Yeah, so when this is targeted before destroying it, deal one each. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at their little thing here, so... Characters holding this terrain can use poison if they do remove this terrain from the game. Huh. Well, that's neat. Yeah, so, it's a quick bug. Yeah. I, th I mean, I think... <coughs> 50s where he's at you guys are also doing uh, you know doing a whole lot of um talking about how to build with him at 50 a lot of monster talk um i mean we I think we can share the most obvious thing is two black hearts and a kong you black heart your kong and your black heart and then you black heart your kong and your black heart yeah that is definitely uh how to get him the most reach possible yeah I think I'm on the other side of that. I'm leaning towards one black heart, two Kong, personally, but... Yeah, and I'm currently on one and one. I think all uh, have their pluses and minuses, but... Yeah, yeah, I think Nick is currently on a monster team. I am a monster theme, and I'm on a ruler theme. Um, yeah, because who wants their... who wants their Everybody wants their Colossal Kong to be driving a motorcycle, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Mad Jim is is silly. Yeah. Um. So the big thing here is, do we think that Kong will be illegal for Adepticon? Me and Nick sure hope so. I really hope he's playable. <laughs> um, I don't know if if the date that we've seen, which I think Nick said was like three six, is I think that's what it was. Yeah. And that is when it releases. It should be legal for Dept. Yeah, I'm just... He is a... Let me look at the thing here real quick. I just want to read he's this a off. Store, he's a retail release. He's not a convention release. Okay. So, for WizKid sponsored iconic. tournaments, HeroClix game elements released at retail are not legal in a construction of, constructed event until one week after the release date. So... If it releases on 3.6 like it should, I think it could even release the week after. Yeah. 3.16 or 3.13. Um, it would be legal. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited that, I mean, it cuts out the Carnage Silver Surfer cost because you can play your Kong or two in place of... Back. And play in, in place of your Carnage Silver Surfers and just do that. It's pretty much like... The easy thing, it's a direct swap in for those teams. Yep. I mean, is he as good? Probably, no. Um, I mean, he, he's more survivable I, on average, right? Because you can... I, no, no, I agree. Yeah, you can and play... I'm all for this. Yeah, Queen, but, Queen of Wands helps him out, and the Imperv card does too. Yep. Uh, uh, those are in my tarot deck, for sure. <laughs> so... But I, um, I will say, I mean, for 10% the cost of a surfer, you know, essentially... Uh, is he thirty? Like, is he thirty? Or... Yeah, yeah, twenty nine ninety nine. So, yeah, so I like that it opens like... up to that. I mean, not everyone has two, three surfers. Most people do that play competitively. So yeah, you know, it's irrelevant to that I point. Mean, no, but not only can he just kind of slot in for a surfer, 
he actually does well against the surfers. So, like, he can be a good budget... Um, Surfer buster, really. Yeah, figure to deal with surfers. Right. And let's be real, as great as Surfer looks, who doesn't want to play Kong over Surfer? Because if you don't, you're wrong. Yeah, who doesn't want to go Unga Bunga, Ook Ook? And I mean, yeah. Surfer is one of my favorite characters of all time. But I, I, I don't. It's Kong. I, I don't I don't want to go Ooga Booga. I mean... That's Ooga disappointing. Smash. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's got his... He's got his, his, I, mean, his I, mean, I, I mean, I do like... Um, Con Conchu, not Conchu, uh, Kathan on Kong with just a thirteen for five, and Porter mm -hmm. makes him a fourteen for five. Yep. So, and you're probably playing with a black heart, so you'll have the empower too. So fourteen yeah. for six. I mean, I big number, big number, go smash. Big number I, more better. Big number more big better. Number more better. That's about the only reason y'all will convince me to play Kong. Um, and you get to knock back, so you actually get even more damage. Right. Yeah. And has Battle Fury, which is impressive. Yep. So And he's colossal, so who cares that you can't carry him? Right. A Blackheart just makes all of that. Yep. Blackheart yes. doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. Silly, silly Blackheart. That thirty five dollar combo versus a surfer. Not too too shabby. <laughs> oh man, that's yeah. what you that's what, I, that's what you think until you go second. Or until you have to go on a big map. <laughs> that's true. Big man, I'd be rough, but there's a way. We'll, we'll deal with that as we as we need to. Yeah. Yep, I'm with you. Just keep building. I mean, you know, yep. we'll talk about it on the show. Um, so, um, Wesley Robinson did ask, has there been any word if WizKids will have a retail booth at Adepticon? Um, I don't know. I have not seen any really info on that. I, they might have a list of vendors, right? Um, I have I'm going to look. Exhibit when I registered and looked, they were not on the list, but that was, I mean, what, the day the day after the tickets went live? Yeah, I was going to look and see if <coughs> there was a a vendor list. I mean, I would think that they would just there, have a... There was one. Um, it was quite long, too. I'm looking at the exhibitor hall. I'm not seeing one. Yeah, where's it at? Down further, event rules, um, Young Bloods tournament, photo gallery sponsors. That's oh, the full exhibitors and sponsors, maybe. Yeah, exhibitors and sponsors. I see that, and of course it's a uh, pictures. Um, I don't see Wiz Kids on there, but I'm not looking really hard either. So. Yeah, is oh, there hey, a... there's a local store to me that's 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 on here. Yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to Adepticon. I mean, yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun. There's going to be a. I mean, here, like, aside, just picking up some fun games for demos and whatnot purposes. Yeah. Fun weekend. Yeah, for sure. I was going to just look and see if there was the venue, hotel, venue, website. Um, about 22 years and counting, but they don't have any, like, pictures of their layouts. Read more on Facebook. Uh, Depticon follow page. Follow, uh, badge. Anyways, so, I don't know. Uh, categories exhibitor hall? I hope they have uh, even just if even if they're just mm. doing like a small booth, maybe like where they're doing the learn to plays. Yeah, maybe so. I don't know. Um, all right, eleven thirty-eight. Final thoughts. Uh, I guess as. I'll go first. Yeah, um, go for it, as. Yeah, Florida. Florida was great. Um, Newmark continues to kill it. Looking forward to Adepticon and Rock Cup. Nick? Um, I mean, roughly the same thing. Uh, fantastic weekend. I think that was my most fun event to date, personally. So, Newmark team, everyone from judges to vendors, uh, the makers market they had set up was fantastic and a lot of fun. Uh, and I'm excited for Kong and 
Chicago here in like what seven or eight weeks. Yep. Um, final thoughts for me. Yeah, thanks everybody for a great time in Chicago. Thanks Newmark and Chris Savoy um, for running the event, and thanks to the two guys doing the Maker's Mark stuff, uh, Maker's Market stuff. Um, the little uh, terrain, uh, not terrain, but little uh, action token. Tokens. Yeah, <laughs> action token things were really cool. The three D printed figures, and then the uh, Craftworks um, cases. Uh, I actually messaged him earlier today about getting one designed, and he said sure. he had some. He had he had some stuff in mind for me. He said so. Um, That's awesome. Great stuff. He told there. me he knows nothing about the Power Rangers, so he doesn't know what to do. Right. Yeah. He said he had an Iron Man one in mind, like it was be his Iron Man briefcase. Nice. And that's that'll be fun. That is badass. So um, he said that his printer is now working full time, um, based on the results of this past weekend. So, um, I'm sure he's got a bunch of orders in. So, hope so. They his his work is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, thanks everybody for listening to Clickstuff today. We'll talk to y'all next time.